Now we should note that when we are solving the problem of interpolation, so when we are given values of some polynomial at points omega n to the power of 0, omega n to the power of n minus 1, when we are to multiply this vector by a matrix mn inverse, the very same tricks that we have used for multiplication of a given vector by matrix M can be carried out and the same, basically the same structured algorithm can be employed to perform this computation to get the vector of coefficients of the polynomial C0 through Cn minus 1 in time which is big O of n log n as well. So the process is practically the same. And this is what we can employ now to provide a big O of n log n algorithm for multiplication of two polynomials. Let's assume that we have two polynomials, each of them of degree at most n minus 1. We'll assume again that n is a power of 2, but this time 2 to the power of m minus 1. That's all because, as we remember, we should evaluate these polynomials at twice the number of points to be able to perform the evaluation interpolation trick for multiplying these two polynomials. So we take the primitive root of unity of degree 2n, we take these 2n points, and we evaluate our polynomials in these points. So this evaluation step requires big O of n log n time due to fast Fourier transform. After this step, we know all the values of our polynomials. Then we need to multiply these values, and the time is linear for that, linear on n, and then we interpolate to get the coefficients of the polynomial p prime, p double prime of x. And the interpolation step takes time, again due to fast Fourier transform, big O of n log n. So the whole process takes time big O of n log n, and we get the coefficients. Now what are the coefficients of this polynomial? The coefficients for the jth power of x here, for j from 0 to 2n minus 2, is equal to the sum of form cs prime cj minus s double prime for s from 0 to j. So essentially we are able to compute for every j the corresponding sum like this by two-stage application of fast Fourier transform. Why it is so important? Well, for multiplication of integers, there is a problem here because we need to have absolute precision there. We cannot lose a single bit. But we know that in standard computers, we do not have arbitrary precision in hardware, even when working with real numbers, let alone complex numbers that we have here. And the foremost application of fast Fourier transform is actually in signal processing, because there the computation of these kind of summations is hugely important, and it's called convolution. So when we have two sequences of CG prime and CJ2 prime, computing the sum where the index of the first sequence runs in forward direction and the index of the second sequence runs in backwards, this is called a convolution of the two sequences. And let's provide one important example where it is actually needed. So suppose that you have a large hole, and there you snap your fingers. A snap of fingers is a very short signal, and it can be considered a unit signal, so it has some amplitude. And if you snap your fingers at time zero, then if you are in a large cathedral, you will have some echo. Even after the first moment of time, after the actual snap, you will hear some echoes of your snap. And of course, these echoes, they rather quickly go down to zero amplitude, but still will have some time, like time t, where everything ends. So now you can have a snapshot of your finger snap. So you can measure what amplitude you get in your system in some time after the actual disturbance. And every sound, when it's discretized, it actually is transformed in this kind of really, really short unit signals of different amplitude 
and as the number of times that the signal is measured in a second is huge, like several dozen thousands per second, the discretized sound is indistinguishable from the real one. So assume that you have this kind of impulse response, so that you had some impulse signal, a very short signal, and you have a response of your system to this signal. And now assume that you have some kind of musical signal. So you have a much more interesting wave shape happening here. Now what we can assume is that every such impulse produces the same kind of response, just properly normalized. So now, if AI is the amplitude of our impulse response for a unit impulse, if this is one, if AI is our impulse response at time i from the original impulse, and if we now have a signal where the value of the signal at time j is equal to bj, then what would be after we try to predict the resulting wave shape, including echoes, if we start playing music in a large hall? So each of the unit impulses, b's, will produce an impulse response. So this guy, for instance, will produce this response, this guy will produce this response, this guy will produce this response, this guy will produce this response, and so on. And then to actually get the amplitude at every given moment of time, we need to add up these individual responses. So now, if we have this snapshot for a unit impulse response, then what actual value shall we have while adding all these responses to unit impulses. At time s, we have the original impulse happening, b sub s, plus we have an impulse that happened at the previous moment of time, but not the actual impulse, but rather a response for this impulse. Now we have a response two units of time after the impulse that happened two units of time ago, and so on. So in the end, what we see here is that if we put a0 to be equal to 1, as we do, we can write it down in a universal way where the index of b runs from top to bottom and the index of a runs from bottom to top. And so computation of these kinds of sum of products is really what we have as a computation of a coefficient of product of two polynomials. So here, one polynomial has coefficients ai, the other polynomial has coefficients bj, and the resulting coefficients of the product of these polynomials produces us the convolution of two original sequences. So now this is one of the many applications of fast Fourier transform and one of the most important ones, the application to computing the convolution of sequences.